I do think there's something about the timing here. Think about this. So over the weekend, Colorado uh, Republicans selected their delegates to the convention. Uh, Donald Trump didn't get any of those delegates, and he's been out there complaining that the system is rigged. And so there's this, there's this thinking among some part of uh, the re Republican electorate that the establishment is trying to basically rig uh, the process against Donald Trump. And so all this talk about a white knight coming into the convention this summer, uh, perhaps Paul Ryan as the Speaker of the House, uh, and they're orchestrating this sort of backroom deal to derail Trump uh, or Cruz, for that matter, uh, as the nominee, I think um, is something I think the RNC and Paul Ryan want to tamp down. The Colorado Republican chairman reported yesterday getting 2,000 phone calls on his cell phone from fired up uh, uh, Republicans uh, in Colorado after what happened over the weekend in terms of their delegate selection process. And, uh, you know, I think that the, the National Party and, and Ryan are trying to be sensitive uh, to that idea that this isn't a, a rigging. Uh, this is the these are the rules, uh, and they just want to show that there's no uh, game afoot here uh, to try to put somebody else in as the nominee, other than the people who are running uh, currently uh, in the race. I, I do have to ask you though, you know, it, with this now, is is the possibility of an open convention looking more and more likely? Uh, it all depends on what happens in, in the upcoming primaries and caucuses. I mean, Donald Trump is still on the path to being able to clinch the nomination uh, if he can continue to win between now and June 7th. And if he doesn't do that, he doesn't get enough delegates uh, to have a majority of delegates at the convention, then yes, it's going to be an open convention. But uh, think about it this way. There are two people in this race uh, who have gotten uh, a significant number of delegates. That's Trump and Cruz. Uh, and so when the delegates show up in Cleveland in July to talk about who their nominee is going to be, pretty good chance it's going that your choices are going to be Trump and Cruz and I don't think you're going to see a scenario in which names like Paul Ryan and others are going to be thrown in unless the convention turns into just total chaos. There is this guy though John Kasich who keeps going hey look at me. Uh, I want to point out he hasn't won a delegate in six weeks. He did come out with a new message today calling it two paths. Here's part of that speech he gave and then I want your response Caitlin. I've stood on a stage and watched with amazement as candidates wallowed in the mud viciously attacked one another, called each other liars, and disparaged each other's character. Those who continuously push that type of behavior are not worthy of the office they are seeking. As for me, as I have said repeatedly, I will not take the low road to the highest office in the land. I will simply not do it. Caitlin, that was part of it there. What do you what do you make of it? Well, John Kasich's trying to present himself as something of a concern, um, consensus alternative if the race were to go to a contested convention in his home state of Ohio and Cleveland in July. Uh, the problem John Kasich faces, though, as you alluded to earlier, is that he hasn't been able to really prove himself as a candidate able to stop Donald Trump. He hasn't picked up a single delegate since Mar March 15th, the day that he won the Ohio primary and the day that Marco Rubio left. He actually still uh, lags behind Rubio in the the delegate count. But he's looking to a place like New York, which awards most of its delegates by congressional district as a way to uh, prevent, uh, help to prevent Trump from, from getting that necessary number uh, and change the kind of trajectory after New York. Uh, it's still a very much an uphill battle for him. And Cruz is doing uh, the same thing and has, you know, more of a proven track record in terms of getting delegates. Well, and Trump here in New York, he's polling right now at more than 50%. If that mm -hmm. happens, John Kasich gets nothing. So I, you know, in some ways, too, when I was listening, to him earlier, it, it's somewhat of the same message. It seems like repackaged. Mm -hmm. Right. And he hasn't been able to really um, gain much traction from this message. From the beginning, he's tried to position himself as kind of the, the happy warrior of sorts, putting forth a positive message, which some critics argue uh, isn't, you know, exactly who he was in previous um, campaigns right. for other offices. Uh, and right now, when you have uh, Donald Trump uh, kind of under some controversy right now, Ted Cruz, uh, some Republicans are, are not, you know, ready to support Ted Cruz yet. John Kasich thinks there's an opening. Um, but again, in the next few weeks, he really has to prove that he uh, is, is able to gain delegates. Uh, you know, Steve, I, Caitlin's alluding to this, but mathematically, it's impossible for him to win. So why stay in the race? 
Well, as Caitlin said, uh, if this does become a situation in which it goes to a second or third ballot at the convention, then he's going to make the argument that he's the most electable in the fall. If you look at the polls in the head-to-head -head matchups against Hillary Clinton, uh, he does better than Cruz and Trump. However, that's really all he has to hang on. I mean, if, if anybody looks at what his performance in the primary pr process, it's terrible. I mean, he's been uh, offering himself as an alternative to Trump and to Cruz, basically, for the last several weeks, and no one's voting for him. And so, you know, it's, it's, it's really sort of an uphill battle for him to go into Cleveland with uh, very few delegates uh, and make the argument uh, to delegates who will be predisposed mostly for uh, uh, for Trump or for Cruz and to say, hey, you know, forget about those guys. Uh, when you get to later ballots, look at me. I'm the one that can save the party. I should be your nominee. Well, I want to ask both of you about this, but Steve, I'll start with you. Ted Cruz campaigning now in California. He's the only one not in New York at this point. Uh, primary in that state isn't even until June. We've seen Cruz slowly chipping away at Donald Trump's delegates in that race now. Is campaigning early in some of these key states a strategy that seems to be working for him? Well, it's interesting. California, it's all about delegates, and it's all about keeping uh, as many delegates away from Trump as possible. California uh, gives away their delegates or allocates their delegates in a way in which, uh, you know, if you're the statewide winner, you get a certain number of delegates, but also if you win in congressional districts, uh, you'll get a certain number of delegates as well. And so what Cruz has been doing in New York and is now trying to do in California is really targeting congressional districts where he thinks he can peel away delegates uh, and really maybe not win the state, but at least win some delegates. Out of this, and in a state that is as large as California, which has 170 plus delegates at stake uh, on June 7th, the more he can pull, peel away from Trump, the better chance uh, they make uh, or they they have of preventing Trump from getting the nomination or clinching the nomination uh, by June 7th. So really, that's what's at play here. Well, that's Caitlin. Along those lines, does it look like Ted Cruz is a little bit more organized here? Oh, certainly. Uh, take Colorado, for example, where he was able to secure uh, the slate of delegates there. Uh, he's been able to really outmaneuver Donald Trump uh, when it really counts, when the delegates are really at stake. Um, Donald Trump has focused largely so far on winning states, and Ted Cruz's strategy has been much more focused um, and in place for you know over a year now he has been really gearing up for this kind of uh, kind of fight so um, Ted Cruz you know is his big strategy as Steve mentioned is really focusing on areas where he can uh, secure delegates and prevent Trump from getting the nomination the Trump campaign is going to be competing in California, which is also a sign that they don't think they're going to be able to put this away before California. So it could be that the last state that goes in this primary process will be the most important one. Steve Chigaris, Caitlin Huey-Burns, thank you both so much for your time this afternoon. We appreciate it. Thanks, Jamie.